All right, we got Hardcore War, The Good Brothers and Violent by Design, taking on Eddie Edwards, Rich Swan, Willie Mack, Heath, and Rhino. This, I think, was the weakest match. This was, uh, this the, was the this weakest This was one of the match. weakest matches yep. of the night. So, basically, there was, what, just, there was just too much going on for me to really follow, like, really I like I, I like Hardcore War, but 10 people is a little much. It is. That's why you kind of um, get I like, lost I, in the I like, I like the new style that they're doing Hardcore War with, where it's you start off with two competitors and each person comes in with a weapon of choice right i liked that perspective but here's the other thing the good brothers were dressed up in like jeans and like a t-shirt like you would be going into a hardcore match or right. a street fight but nobody else really was right we need to have the, uh, everything is about that and right. to be honest with you it was just it was a hardcore match. Yeah. I mean, it just was what it was. Classic Tommy Dreamer hardcore match. Right. Sort of thing, you know. Tommy Dreamer is backstage, people. I mean, obviously he is. And I, I can't remember who actually won. It was a fantastic hardcore match, if you like that. Um, but yeah, I think maybe it, faces what I think what was yes. the big news was after this match. Yes, after the match, some people from Ring of Honor came um, up. OG, OGK, so yep. Matt Taven, Mike Bennett, Vincent, and PCO attack all the baby faces. Yep. I like it, but at the same time, I'm so confused about the hogpodge of people because if you know anything about these people— Matt Taven and Vincent had a huge blood rivalry mm -hmm. that spanned in months and months and months. Why are they working together? Because they're King Ring of Honor. <laughs> it was it's an odd choice, let's it, put it that way. Well, hey, you, you can't you can't have everybody. <laughs> I'm sure that if it was somebody else it would have been other people, but it's just you know, you just get what you get. And I think I guess. PCO has signed a contract with Impact Yes, Wrestling he did. As he well, did sign so. a contract with them. I think he's the, I think he's the only one who signed a deal yeah, with them so far. As it yeah, to this. Right. So far. All right, Peanut Gallery, let's make this shit majestic again. So with this match, I would have not done anything differently on a physical level. Right. But them mentioning the Royal Rumble as much as they did, they did not have to mention the Royal Rumble in any capacity. But that was that was just the big news. It was the big news. If they mentioned it once, fine. But they mentioned it too many times, and it took me away from it. Also, the intensity in some parts of this match were not all the way there. If this is a blood feud, make it feel like that. I don't know that it was a blood feud. Well, now keep in mind, Mickey James beat uh, Deanna Perrazzo for true. the championship in that historic reign. So in a way, it was a blood feud. We were there live when that happened. Right. Biggest pop of the night, I swear to God. But it was a blood feud because that's how... Deanna but, Perrazzo but viewed this right. championship. But it's kind of over at this point. I think Deanna Perrazzo is moving on to different things. I think Mickey James is moving on to different things. And there, I'm yeah. happy this was the main event, by yeah, the way. I'm, I'm happy, too. I think, I think even if they were not going to announce that Royal Rumble entry thing that WWE did, this was going to be the main event. Oh, absolutely. There was no point, and I hate saying this because this is mean, there was no point on Cardona being in this match. No, there wasn't. It was really a Moose versus W. Morrissey thing. If it was only going to be Moose versus W. Morrissey, they would have done a different rivalry. And I think Matt Cardona and W. Morrissey were taken out of a proper one-on-one -on -one match. Either or. If it was Moose versus Cardona, great. If it was Moose versus W. Morrissey, great. Right. A, a three-way match in this just felt a little off to me. It did. There was always it was kind of that third wheel situation. Right. Also, Cardona was the main focus of this rivalry, where right. people were really backing him, and they still were during the show. Yeah. But him eating the pin after everything that happened and how they built it was the wrong decision. I don't know. I don't think they had a choice. Because, because they booked, booked themselves, themselves into a corner well, yeah. by having this three-way. If they wanted to do W. Morrissey and Moose, that would have been whatever. And if they wanted to do that, okay, then he would have eaten the pin. But Moose emphasized that Cardona was a mid-carder at best. And for Cardona to be pinned clean, it emphasized that. Well, that just makes Moose all the more... 
right. powerful looking. Right. No, it made him look right. Cardona did not feel like a main eventer in this. Because it was a three-way. Exactly. It shouldn't have been a three-way in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> they booked themselves into a corner and they made the wrong choice on how this match ended. Yeah. If but they that's, were gonna... that's, that, that's just is what it is. If they were going to do where Cardona ate the pin, I would have done like a chair shot or a bell shot or something like, oh, a sheet thing, you know? That would have been, that at least would have saved where Cardona could have theoretically have won that or it was by fluke. Right. Too many people. Yep, too many people. There, were, there was, no, if it was just violent by design taking on Heath. Rhino and Eddie Edwards, yeah. that would have made this match infinitely better. Yeah. Just in general. Oh, yeah. The Good Brothers versus Rich Swan and Willie Mack should have been a totally separate match. They were shoehorned in there to get those guys on the card. Right. That was stupid. That's pretty much it. It was stupid. Yeah. And it, there was no reason for it because guess what? The Heath, Again, there was just too many people. The, the, Heath, the Heath Rhino Violent by Design thing was the hardcore match that this should have been. Right. And Eddie Edwards being put in there, if they want to do that just to have the balancing effect out, fine. Because Eddie Edwards is the hardcore guy. Right. But the other two teams, no reason for it. You had, you had plenty of time to have a TNA or an Impact World Tag Team Championship. Match. No, absolutely. It just didn't happen. Stupid. Yeah. Just absolutely stupid. Yeah. This was awesome. Yeah, I wouldn't. Have I wouldn't. Something. I wouldn't have done anything different from the debut of Jonah mm-hmm. to the match itself, structurally, yep. and where everybody looked good after. Right. And again, this is part of this part of the redemption arc for Josh Alexander. Right. And that is why Jonah was a big guy going in there. Right. He was. He was a formidable wall in the way of. Of the redemption, and right? He over, he had to overcome. And the, now, and, and now it's going to be the right. Charlie Haas arc, which is fine. So I wouldn't have really done anything different with this match. I no. thought it was structured really well. The rivalry was great, and you know. And um, I think Jonah has a few more months left, so we'll see who, who he faces at Rebellion. Because you exactly. know he's going to be in a match at Rebellion. Exactly. So I would not have changed a thing. <laughs> I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have changed a thing with it. I may have wanted to have um, Jonathan Gresham maybe do something with Impact a little bit more before the show itself because it just felt like a cold title match to me. It pretty much was, is what. Yeah. And it was good structurally. I wouldn't have done right. anything different inside of that. But I really wish they would have built a story around. Hey, let's up the ante. Let's make it pure rules. We didn't know it was pure rules until the match started. Right. If it was pure rules, that's what makes it important. Right. It was just there were just some story aspects with this that could have been done better. A little bit, yeah, a little bit better. Absolutely. Right. So that was just kind of the only thing for me as it relates to that. I wouldn't have done anything different with this no. in every single way, shape, or form, including the winner. Right. Because because Steve Macklin is now even more pissed off than than he was before. Maybe we. So can do, what's maybe, his next move? Maybe um, as soon as Charlie Haas's match is done, it's going to be Macklin versus Alexander. Or maybe he goes after a different championship, takes advantage of that. He's pissed. He's a he's a pissed I think, off I think, gentleman. I think, I, I think him going after after Josh Alexander would actually be the next really good match for Rebellion because obviously they're going to do uh, Moose versus Morrissey. Let's do a number one contenders match between Macklin and Alexander. Why? Built because both Why? of them. Why Macklin were... lost? Macklin's just a pissed off redneck now. <laughs> Well, what, what other, other title can he go for? for? The digital media champion yeah. has to step down. The only other no, title. That's other not, why do you think that's a step down necessarily? Because the only time that this title has actually been defended, it has not been defended on pay-per-view yet. It's been defended on pre-shows and stuff on social media. So How can you sit there and say that it's not a step down? It's kind of a step down. I'm just saying that's a perfect way for him to go about getting a title if he wants to because he's a pissed off guy. He was going to take advantage of something and he maybe 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 he wins the belt and puts it on the line every single week or something like that. That at least that at least builds the credibility of that belt, but also you know that there's going to be a development on a good match. Right. But that, but that's but fine. that's the point. The point is that now he's pissed off. He doesn't he doesn't deserve number one contender. He deserves none of that. He lost. He lost the match 
fair and square, and now he's just pissed off, and he is going to look for a way to get gold around his waist. That's my point. Okay. He, he does not need to be a number one contender's match for the world title. <laughs> okay. Um, here's the thing. The, we need a few more of these types of matches for these women to be more comfortable. I think that starting with six people was the wrong decision. Yep. They should have started with, like, three or four. Right, right because, because we've, we've seen, seen that before. before. Right. That would have been that would have been fine. Like a a, a six person thing to determine it because now you're just adding people. Well, for no again, reason. they're not comfortable with the ultimate X. You could tell. Why do you have the max number of people that can be in this match for the first one? Right. Have like three or four of them instead of six. That would have. I think that would have actually put a benefit onto the match itself. Have like. Jordan Grace, uh, Tasha Steele, because they're the ones who brought it up, and maybe uh, Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green, right? Yeah, I mean the other one's like okay, Rosemary's been with the tag. Lady Frost just debuted, and Alicia Edwards has not been on TV. Why did they get that opportunity? Right. At least Jordan Grace is a champion right. in some way, shape, or form. Tasha Steele's helped not only get the match off the ground, but she's been on TV constantly, and Chelsea Green has been wrestling constantly and winning matches. Right. That would have been fun, and I think that would have actually added to the match. Right, because then the spots could have been a little higher quality. Right. But anyways, um, a couple of other things. The uh, ROH invasion, um, what are your thoughts on that? I do. I believe if they, if they, I don't know how much follow up there's going to be on this. I mean, I understand why they're doing it, but I need some. They haven't done a lot of. Have they done a lot of follow up with this? Yes, they have. Okay. They've, um, they have. They have attacked. They attacked on last week's Impact. They attacked D'Lo. Okay. Um, they had a couple of other involvements, including in the main event. Right. Um, but my problem was is that the people that they chose was a bit different. If because people who watch it. Because the, if the people who watch Impact are going, I'm going. There's only assumption. Seventy-five percent of them watch Ring of Honor. It's almost the same fan base. Okay. And the fact that they had Taven and Vincent, who had that huge blood rivalry, now standing shoulder to shoulder like nothing fucking happened, is the how most long? How long ago was that blood feud? It was. Um, it, the number one contendership changed hands, I think, like two weeks before final battle. So it was oh, so this was, fresh. this was a recent. Okay. It was. It's still fairly fresh, but also they had a big blood feud. Right. This was not just a small blood feud, and also they they're keeping the same sort of gimmicks without any sort of synergy. Right. It, it kind of feels like. Um, it kind of feels like. They're yeah. It kind. It kind of feels like. Oh God, what was that team called? It was Bo Dallas. It was it was Bo Dallas, Adam Rose, Heath Slater, and um uh uh oh a, uh, Curtis, Curtis Axel. What well, were they? I don't remember that. I, I social I, outcasts. Oh, there we go. They were the social. I feel like they're the social outcasts. Right. And that's how not what you should feel like as it relates right. to this. Right. Have them maybe wear like a T-shirt or some innuendo where they have like a something, color something, synergy. Right, something that com- that brings them together. Um, other one, uh, your thoughts on Tom Phillips? Whatever his, his name is, is, no longer slave name, being a part of the show. He replaced Matt Stryker. Um, Matt Matt Stryker's firing. I don't understand it because I thought he was doing. Fine. Yeah. Um, do you believe a three person would have worked? No. There was there can only be two in that. D'Lo Brown is just fine. Yeah, he's D'Lo, fine. He's fine doing the color commentary. It's obviously a decision that they made, but I feel like they did that a little unceremoniously. The striker. I I don't I don't think it was either a good or a bad thing. Now I can see some positives. I can also see some negatives. I just don't know. I mean, I also just also um, strikers tweet. Kind of gave me the impression that they just fired him, and my thing was, why? And Maybe it was an all-impact decision-making, because they are still owned by Anthem. But, that's true. But anyways, um, that was another new development. Um, I can't think of anything else that happened not that the, event. Not, not particularly off the top of my head, other than, you know, um, oh, I was going to want to talk about the... Um, orientation of the match because I wouldn't have done anything differently with this. Oh, yeah, no. Because oh, in, in the general overall thing of the show, this Hard to Kill was a perfect example on how to structure the orientation of matches, mm-hmm. which is very important for people's interest to stay with the show. You don't want to burn them out too quickly, 
but you don't want technical wrestling to start off the show because they will get them bored. Right. Therefore, every two matches, they had a slower-paced match structurally. So they had first the Ring of Honor World Championship match. Or, yeah, the Ring of Honor World Championship match. They had a couple of matches. Then they had um, the Hardcore War, where basically there was a lot of technical wrestling. It was just hit somebody over the head or put them through a table. Right. There so, wasn't – it was it was a perfect melding of right. those two aspects. It, it keeps your interest up. Right. Okay. So, next week, um, I don't know when – I don't know when the uh, – when is the terminus event? Um, I do not know. I will have to. I can look it up really quick here if my okay. shit wants to. Because actually, I had that pulled up a little bit before. I just don't. I don't think it's actually anytime soon. I thought it was like later this month. I think I butchered the spelling on that, but we're just gonna roll with it. Uh, Wikipedia, work with me today. They're not going to. I don't think it exists. You don't think? The, I don't. I don't think the. I don't think there's a page for it. Okay, I will double check okay. on that. I think it's next week. I think it's on the 16th. I could be wrong. Anyways, about that. but anyways, we're gonna cover that if that's being covered. If not, then oh, today's the 16th. I think it's the 23rd. Anyway, so <laughs> if if so, we'll we'll cover that if that is if is indeed a part of next week. If not, we'll have a topic. It's TBD. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because exactly. there's no other pay-per-view. So anyways, that's kind of all we got. Anything else we need to go over before we... Um, other than follow us on all of our social medias, yep. become a patron. Yep. Um, yes, we'll let you know ahead of time on what the next thing is. I think I know what we're going to do if we don't have a pay-per-view. Yeah. But other than that, we're good. And as always, be... Majestic.